Hey guys, David here and welcome to another video. As promised in the last CNC update video, today I'm gonna tackle some of the electronics. Uh, now the main control electronics are done, but uh, as of now, uh, the home position is just wherever I start the machine and I don't have any way of homing the machine or having any kind of uh, solid reference point that uh, gives me any idea in the software where exactly physically the machine is. So what I have already done is uh, installed a limit switch here in X and a long time ago in Z. Uh, I have one here for the uh, X, uh, that was Y, for the X axis as well. So I uh, just need to install that one, uh, hook the other ones up to the controller, configure some stuff and then I should have actual homing working. I also started installing drag chains, but I need to uh, prolong some of the cables so that I can actually uh, put them in the drag chains and they're long enough to still reach the controller. So other than that, uh, I'm gonna hook the light up here uh, back into the circuit and do some other minor things uh, to get the machine fully up and running. Now before I get started with uh, the video, I want to give a big thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring it. They make super high quality PCBs that I use in all of my PCB projects. And it's uh, super easy to deal with them. You just kind of upload the Gerber files. You can talk to their uh, support team to uh, make sure that everything is understood properly. And then uh, get, your, get a batch of 10 of them made for just five bucks. That is crazy cheap. And uh, basically there's no excuse anymore not to have high quality PCBs. But you can literally get 10, 10 by 10 centimeters double layered with silk screen, all that good stuff, even in black, for just five bucks. Uh, that's just a great deal. They also offer a bunch of other uh, PCB services like flexible PCBs or more advanced stuff. So make sure to go check out PCB Boy, link down below. All right, so I've spent quite a few hours doing a bunch of cable work, soldering, prolonging cables. It was a huge pain, but I think I'm done now. Now the moment of truth is gonna be me turning on and seeing if the X-axis motor still works. Uh, that's the one with the, like 10 different wires that I had to prolong. And then next is gonna be uh, testing, configuring the limit switches and all the, those homing routines. So how about we just give it a try? So far so good. Nothing tripping the breakers. The light works. That's not quite right. So the motor on the x-axis doesn't seem to be 100% correctly wired up. Uh, something uh, triggered the e-stop on the driver for it, so it's not reacting anymore. I'll have to restart it to figure out what that is. But in the meantime, let's see if the limit switches are reading. I'm not even sure if I have them set up in here, but I guess we'll find out. On the switch itself, the light is lighting up. Nothing lighting up in here, but I'm not sure if something's supposed to. Alright, so all three limit switches have power, and if something metallic comes near, uh, they do light up, meaning that they trigger. Uh, I'll have to figure out if they uh, are sending the correct signals. All right, the controller board also reads the signals, so my wires are definitely working. I'll just have to uh, properly uh, configure them inside of the software.
All right, so I have now uh, hooked up all the wires and uh, everything should be working. All the limit switches are hooked up. I mounted the limit switch for the x-axis as well. And uh, after swapping around uh, two of the wires that I wrongly connected on the sensing of the x-axis motor, all of the motors worked again as well. Uh, all nicely cable managed in the drag chains. I can turn the light on and off as you've already seen. And I've also configured the limit switches now inside of Mach 4. I'll show you later how I did that. And they already work that uh, if you try to drive the axis into the switch, uh, it automatically stops and disables the machine. And I can re-enable the machine and it allows me to jog away from the switch, but not any closer towards the switch. I've also set up homing. I have not tried it yet. Uh, I have no idea if it's actually going to work. Uh, theoretically, it should first uh, home the X axis to the top then the y-axis to the front and then the x-axis uh, this way uh, to its maximum. Uh, but I am not quite sure uh, if it's actually gonna work, so I thought I'm just gonna try it on camera in case it fails. Uh, also, the, I haven't set up the x-axis uh, plate yet that it hits, so I'm just gonna manually trigger that. Uh, but uh, the other two axes should hold, hopefully. All right, not quite configured properly yet. Let's try that again. I can adjust the speed at which it's home, so I just set it to uh, 100 millimeters a minute from now, just to be safe. All right, that's not quite working yet. I mean, it tricked the C positive uh, switch, but uh, somehow it's not properly homing yet. I'll get back to you in that. All right, so I've got everything configured now. Now, uh, the trials were not without casualties. Uh, it turns out that if you enable soft limits and then you make changes to the limits and then you click apply, they don't actually apply until you turn the limits off and on again. But nothing that can easily be replaced uh, has uh, been broken and it actually still works enough that I can uh, demonstrate to you uh, it working in action. And it actually works uh, quite well. So I'm just gonna uh, click on home and then we can see the machine do its thing. All right, it's going to be uh, message referencing is complete. Now the reason why you didn't see the z-axis move is because I haven't moved it since the last home bit, so it was already in the position, so that was basically instant. But now you can see uh, that all the lights turned green and in the machine coordinates, uh, I'm at zero for the x, zero for the y, that's the front left corner, and z is at 340. That's the limit of my z-axis. Uh, so if I move down 340 millimeters, that I will be at uh, z0, uh, which is just how far down the spindle can go. Now, you can see that soft limits are enabled, and what that does is basically uh, the machine now is home, so it knows where it is. And uh, since I'm using servo motors, no, let me correct that. Since I'm using closed loop stepper motors, uh, I can actually also be uh, fairly s certain that uh, the machine will actually be where it thinks it is. Because uh, with a just stepper motor, you send it a signal to move, and uh, if everything works, it moves. Or if it doesn't move, then you have no idea that it did not move. But with closed loop stepper motors, uh, the controller for the motors will actually 
make sure that the motors have actually moved, they have recorders on them, and if it uh, didn't move, it will increase the current and try and otherwise uh, error out and tell me, hey, something didn't go wrong. Uh, now, with uh, servo motors, uh, the, actually the control software itself would also be aware of the exact position, but uh, it's not necessarily needed uh, for this application, uh, since they are quite a lot more expensive as well. But what I could do is that I could uh, move around uh, the table freely, however I may desire, and the machine will stop me from running into anything. So like, if I come close enough uh, to uh, one of the zero points, then it will automatically decelerate and stop very smoothly. That is comport, uh, compared to the hard limits, which is when you just have like a limit switch at either end, that it will just kind of go full speed until it senses that limit switch and then uh, do a full stop, which is really not too good on the machine since uh, such a heavy metal table it does have quite a lot of force if you try to stop it all of a sudden, like immediately, instead of uh, gradually slowing it down with the standard acceleration. That's why soft limits uh, are quite nice, but of course they are software, so uh, I could accidentally hit that button and now soft limits are off. And if I don't notice that, I might crash the machine and think, why didn't the soft limits save me? But customer turned off. Um, in Mac 4, by default, they are actually off. Uh, I've heard other people complain about that there's no way to have them on by default. I'll have to do investigate that myself. But uh, the way it's configured, uh, they are off by default and you have to turn them on every time you turn on the machine. Now I'm actually gonna uh, go inside uh, the configuration for the homing and limit switches to kind of show you what I've done in there. So first I of course need to disable the machine, then I can go uh, into configure, control, and in here I have all uh, the different uh, things I can change and under homing and soft limits is uh, where I'm set up and here you can see that I have homing for x, y and z uh, in the order first z moving to the positive direction, then secondly y moving in negative direction and x moving in negative direction. And then here, home, home offset is basically once it finds home, what uh, position should that be? So it's zero for x and y at the 340 that we saw earlier for the z-axis. Here I can also set the homing speed, but this actually does not apply to me because uh, uh, for the Ethernet Smooth Stepper, I have a different plugin uh, that also has some settings for Hobie, and it actually takes the speed from that setting uh, instead of here. That's another thing that I like about Mach 4 is where like you have uh, the plugin for your controller, uh, that like a bunch of settings are in there, but they also might be in the general uh, settings as well, and you don't really know which one of the two uh, is the one that is applied, which is kind of a shame. And then here you can see the three check marks for soft enable and uh, the soft minimum and soft maximum. That also shows you uh, the final uh, travel uh, of all of my axes. I have 460 millimeters on the X axis, 200 millimeters on the Y axis, and 340 millimeters on the Z axis. That's basically uh, just found by moving them to the very end just before they will crash and then using that value. Let's quickly also have a look inside of the controller uh, configuration. That's under plugins. And then this one also has uh, a bunch of stuff that is uh, duplicate, but uh, here under homing, uh, I select which pin uh, is used for the homing. I've uh, given it aliases, so it's easier to figure out. And then here is where I set the speed. So I have all the axes. Uh, homing at 200 millimeters a minute, uh, which is quite slow, but I, like if he hits, finds the home point, it will actually stop like immediately and not decelerate slowly. So I don't want to go too fast, otherwise uh, the machine will uh, experience uh, quite a bit of force, which is not too nice. And then the back of velocity is that it like moves back from the limit switch ever so slightly, at least usually. Uh, I've seen that sometimes it doesn't do it, sometimes it doesn't, and there's no way to adjust how much, but don't really care. I just set that to 100 millimeters a minute. It doesn't really matter. Uh, and that's the configuration for the Hobie. And then uh, to finish off, I believe uh, that while it is a bit scary, I do owe you 100% uh, feed rate into the abyss, uh, where it uh, just hit the button to 
basically crash the machine at 100% feed rate, but to demonstrate that the soft limits will save me. And uh, knowing my luck, I, that's probably a stupid idea and I'll crash the machine because something malfunctions, but hey, why not try it? All right, so you see, moving quite fast. Uh, I'm gonna just hit the button to move the y-axis forward and it'll start automatically. As we were able to hear, and I'll uh, do a close-up of it in a second, and it didn't like jolt or anything or stop very suddenly. It nicely decelerated as if I perfectly hit uh, the button to stop in the right uh, time, but as you can see, I would never be able to hit it to that uh, precision and uh, it's actually the soft limits that are working. And with that, uh, I'm actually mostly done with uh, the, this video. Uh, that's kind of what I wanted to get the Hobie set up and all working. Now I will have to replace that one Hobie switch, uh, but that is not a big deal. Now I also quickly want to show you another thing that I got, uh, which is uh, uh, air activated uh, impact driver and what I will be using that for is not disassembling old cars but it will, will be mounted somewhere up here to uh, quickly change the tools in and out. I've seen a couple of uh, people uh, on YouTube uh, build similar contraptions for their machines. Uh, now they are not using uh, Morse Taper 3 but most of them are really using like PT30 or something like that. Uh, where it is even a bit easier to automate the tool changing or like uh, not necessarily fully automated but make it quicker. Um, my problem is that uh, Morse Taper 3 uh, is notorious for sticking and uh, mine is really bad. Like if I tighten it down even just a little bit, uh, I basically have to whack it with a hammer a couple of times to come loose. Now, from what I've heard, uh, Morse Taper 3 can stick uh, and is quite notorious for that, but it shouldn't be quite that bad. So if any of you have uh, any ideas what I can do uh, to get the, it to stick less, I've already put some oil in there, which should really help. Uh, maybe I need to sand the edges or something, uh, look at the wear pattern. Uh, if any of you are experts, leave a comment down below. Uh, but this should allow me to change the tools quite a lot quicker and without needing three or four hands as the way you need to usually do it is you need one wrench to stop the spindle from turning, then you need another wrench to uh, open up the tool and then you need uh, to hold the tool on the bottom so it doesn't drop out and you actually need a fourth hand to uh, whack the thing with a hammer to properly come out. Uh, but I don't have three hands yet, uh, I'm still working on the third hand. Uh, but until I have that uh, with this impact driver, I can easily uh, tighten and loosen it without locking the spindle as it is uh, a hammer driver uh, instead of constant force. Um, with the pressure low enough, it actually also doesn't over tighten it too, too much. Sadly, the hammering is not enough to knock the things loose though. But that's it for today. Uh, Make sure to uh, be subscribed to this channel so you don't miss any future updates about the CMT. I'm hopefully gonna be working on it uh, quite a bit in the future. And uh, if you like the video, leave a like uh, down below. Also, make sure to comment if you have any suggestions, questions, anything like that. So thanks for watching and until next time.